Craig here, another edition of Make America Healthy Again with my friend Jan Jeremias of Pause Path. Hey, Jan. Hey, Craig. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, yeah. So Jan is a, a animal wellness practitioner who specializes in dogs and cats, right? I think I have that right. Mm -hmm. And Jan and I actually have been working together over the past couple of years, um, developing her, her, her website and her work in this area of Pause Path. Can you talk a little bit about what Pause Path is first, and we talk a little bit about how you got to Pause Path. Um, Pause Path is um, my own business. It's a consultation-based or in-person consultation that someone might choose to have for their animal um, for multiple reasons. One is to maintain good health, so fits in well with the program, <laughs> um, keeping your animals as healthy as possible um, because they are exposed to pretty much everything that we are exposed to. Mm -hmm. And then um, working with animals that, um, and the other reason is working with animals that might have um, illnesses or situations where they require um, sort of a, a hand and, so, and support in whatever traditional medical care or veterinary medical care that they're getting. Mm -hmm. Right. And how, how would this be different than, than that kind of straight up veterinary care? Well, um, basically because one is I'm not a veterinarian, so I like people to go to a veterinarian mainly for diagnosis. Mm -hmm. I then work with the um, caretaker, um, the animal caretaker, and um, we have a really long conversation. And what I do is design um, alternatives or complements to traditional veterinary care. So where your vet might prescribe testing and medication, I would then go to more holistic route and recommend things like essential oils and flower essences and supplements and maybe acupuncture or hydrotherapy. I don't do those, but I would then send you maybe places that you could access those facilities. Right. So what, what was what was your path to pause path? How, how'd you how, how'd you come up with this? Uh, this sort of this sort of system of, of working with with pets this way. Um, well, I have my dog had um, Alzheimer's, and um, at the time I was um, going to a very traditional vet, and he and he was a wonderful vet, but he wanted to do a lot of medication, um, and I wasn't really a medication person, and so I decided that I was looking for I was looking for alternatives, and so I started using essential oils. And they were very helpful um, in managing some of the symptoms of canine cognitive dysfunction, which is doggy Alzheimer's. And um, at the time, my dog was 14 and she lived to 19, which is very old for a dog and basically healthy until the last few months. And then after that, I just started, you know, like I used to get a lot of calls. People knew that I had started working with a lot of animals. I had two cats and a dog and I'd been working with them. And then other people would call me and it just sort of evolved. I then you know, wrote my book on essential oils for dogs and cats, spoil your pet. And then since then, I've been doing consultations for a lot of people, um, wellness consultations or sort of um, health care um, consultations for people with animals. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I know that you have a straight, straight up science background. Can you talk a little bit about your education, your credentials, and, the, and sort of that background. Because I think it's an important piece here because there's the whole sort of woo-woo aspect of the sort of holistic scene that people think, okay, you know, people just have, uh, you know, a sort of uh, uh, a hobby that they're, they're into or things that they enjoy and take a few yoga classes and then they, they, they become a, a facilitator or something. You, you actually have uh, quite quite a uh, an established science background educationally. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I have a bachelor's in biology, and I went and I got a master's degree in immunology and infectious disease at the University of London, and along with that came a degree or a diploma in tropical medicine. So my specialty was infectious disease. That was my sort of passion, um, and I worked in clinical research for about 24 years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as I'm the director or assistant director of a number of labs. And so when I came to essential oils, they, um, they really made sense to me. I don't know veterinary medicine that well as far as, um, you know, it is different than human physiology, but I sort of get the systems and I understand their purpose and that I think helps me really come up with really great recommendations for my clients because mm -hmm. I, I sort of get the physical aspect of it. Um, I also sort of get the other set of other alternative modalities, like I try to incorporate a little bit more of Eastern medicine in my recommendations. So it's mm -hmm. a little more holistic. 
And now, you know, while, while the, the, the biology of humans and pets, like you say, is different, uh, but there's also a lot of similarities. So when you talked about uh, healing modalities before, you talked about acupuncture, you talked about herbs, you talked about uh, nutrition, uh, essential oils, uh, the areas where those, you know, as far as, as a pet uh, caretaker, the things that we think about and do for ourselves, by and large, we can also think about and employing and using with our pets, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I always say start with the basics, which is good nutrition. And so, you know, there I'm not an animal nutritionist and I don't claim to me. I have certain like sort of foods I like and don't like. Um, I do actually have um, access to a really good animal nutritionist. So, um, so if I have any really, I want to say tough cases or people that are really looking, have, um, you know, animals with severe illness or I really might think benefit, might benefit from a really... Um, you know, more than the standard diet, mm -hmm. then I actually consult with her. And then, um, you know, acupuncture, which is amazing for animals and animals respond very well. Same thing with like rehab or things like hydrotherapy for animals and then essential oils mm -hmm. um, or um, supplements, which the essential oil part, I actually have a pretty extensive knowledge now. Um, I've done some coursework and um, a little a training with a vet. Um, who specializes in essential oils for animals, and that's sort of what's given me, I think, a really strong background in that area. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I thought was interesting when you and I started working together uh, with with your with your media is that explaining the idea of pause path was to say that whatever you're going through, your pet is also going through, sort of emotionally. Uh, that that is another component here that I thought that, that was so compelling to how you work. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think it's very, it became very obvious to me a number of years ago that um, I now have another dog and he's very sensitive to my moods. And it became very apparent to me um, that he responds to me. And so I like to really look at the whole picture of the owner and the animal relationship and, you know, what type of person the caretaker is, you know, are they laid back? Are they high strung? Are they, you know, extremely driven? You know, are they a workaholic, you know, <laughs> kind of thing, because all that happens to affect our pets and, you know, our animals. And I had this instance the other day, I was must have been reading something um, on Facebook. And I guess I got upset by it because all I don't like I didn't make any sound. But all of a sudden, the dog's head was in my lap and the cats were like in my face. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh, it must have had some sort of energetic or body reaction or something that they responded to. So I think that that connection is really, really, really strong and very important when we're looking at helping our animals live healthy lives. Right. Well, I've heard that dogs can smell fear, right? Is that, is that? I think they smell fear. I think they, you know, I think they just, um, they respond to everything. I think they smell fear. It's, you know, obviously there's an odor that's put off. I think they um, respond to um, fast movements and things like that. Mm -hmm. So how you carry yourself and all, all those things play a part. Right. Uh, so when, when you work with a client, which is a client and their, and their, and their pet, a, a, an animal, uh, a pet care giver and their pet, uh, that's something that happens in person initially, or this can also be also be done virtually. And how how would you work with somebody? Um, well, if it's done virtually, because I work with people all over the country, um, usually you know it starts by email. Um, I then um, will have them complete an extensive questionnaire that I have, and that gives me quite a lot of information. Usually, then we either have an online conversation like we're having now or um, a phone conversation. And then I get to really sort of delve a little deeper. Um, and then after that, I come up with a plan. I might email or text questions in between saying, okay, please clarify this or tell me a little bit more about this aspect. And then I come up with a plan and then we go over the plan and I check in and I make sure everything's going, going well. We might actually do updates or sort of like, you know, refinements in the, whatever the recommendations are. And so far, um, a lot of them have been quite, most of them have been quite successful. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, that, and that's working all virtually even. Yes. I mean, I'm happy to see if, a, if somebody lives close enough, I will actually go see the pet. But to me, it's almost like each animal is this beautiful mosaic. Mm -hmm. And I'm the one who's, has the ability to see all the little shards of glass and sort of put them together 
so that they sort of make sense. Mm-hmm. And are there any particular sort of ailments or issues that you think seem to work better in, in the way that you work than others? Um, I don't think so. Um, I think if the owner is uh, or the caretaker is really dedicated and really um, on board with this, then it works really well. Because one thing I find is obviously consistency is really important. So if you're have a, you know, if I've sent some recommendations and you're supposed to apply certain essential oils or give certain supplements, you know, missing times that are of application and things like that, it's really a consistency. And, it, you know, you have to be diligent in your sort of health care like regimen mm-hmm. for them. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I think I get a lot of um, calls for um, lately, you know, it varies and I have my seasons, you know, like right now I have a number of dogs with heart issues um, you know, congestive heart failure and kidney failure. And a few months ago I was getting a lot of um, dogs with cancer Mm -hmm. and I, you know, just seems to be, you know, that's what's, um, that's what's being asked of me right now. Great. Okay. Well, this has been great. Thanks so much for your time, Jan. Uh, we'll, we'll get, we'll get this posted with the information about how people can contact you if they want more about your services and find out how uh, you can be helping them and their pets. Okay, thank you so much, Craig. Have a great day. Same to you. Bye-bye.